turn a knob, push a button, twist a dial. Voices and music wing their way around the world with the speed of light. The miracle of radio is accepted today as commonplace. Yesterday's most fanciful dreams are now everyday realities. More wonderful than Aladdin's lamp is the modern electron tube, a seemingly insignificant object of glass and wires and filaments controlling electricity in fantastic ways. Behind the everyday magic of radio is a story of patient, untiring research. Research for new wonders that will make today's development seem nothing more than ordinary. Research that began in 1919 in a simple radio shack at Riverhead, Long Island, destined later to become the home of Radio Central for worldwide communications. But our story begins in Princeton, New Jersey, in a new building, a laboratory like none other in the field of radio, the RCA Laboratories, world center of radio research and pioneering dedicated to increase the usefulness of radio and electronics to the nation, to the public, and to industry. In this building, incorporating every known feature in modern laboratory construction, men of research devote their lives to the advancement of mankind. Dr. C.B. Jolliffe, Executive Vice President in charge of the RCA Laboratories Division, and E.W. Engstrom, Vice President in charge of research, direct the work of a group of noted research workers, scientists, and laboratory technicians who are constantly seeking new ideas in the ever-broadening fields of radio and electronics. And here are some of the men who help guide research. This is Dr. Vladimir K. Zwarikin. Seated next to him is Dr. L. P. Smith. While here, we meet Dr. H. H. Beveridge all discussing a future development at this typically informal conference. Here is a place where creative men can plan and work, knowing that no facility is lacking, no want left unsatisfied. Each laboratory bay, and the building houses 150 of them, is a masterpiece of design. Within easy reach are outlets for almost any type of electric current, There are taps for air, gas, water, hydrogen, and oxygen. In this bay, radio research joins hands with medical science in bringing the world the benefits of penicillin, that wonder-working drug produced from mold. And what has radio research to do with penicillin? It's a fascinating story. Dr. George H. Brown and his co-workers introduced the use of radio frequency current in the bulk reduction of penicillin. The result? Time and money-saving apparatus and more penicillin to save more lives. And here is an electronic sewing process, sewing a fine seam on synthetic materials, a seam that's airtight and watertight to improve raincoats and caps, weather balloons, and to make possible better packaging of foods. In place of needle and thread, this sewing process uses radio frequency current, a new idea from radio research that will have an important bearing on what we will eat and what we will wear. A model shop, which no other laboratory in the world can match, meets the utmost need of the research man. No matter how heavy the material or how fine, there is the right kind of machine and a skilled operator to handle the job. Here in the cabinet shop, the research man's ideas come to life in wooden scale models. What are they? Perhaps the beginnings of your tomorrow's television receiver or some other new electronic device. As you might expect, in this laboratory, even time is told in watches set by a new kind of timekeeper, the electronic clock. The same principles used in the electronic clock are also used to measure in split seconds the speed of bullets and projectiles. In his laboratory, we find Igor Grostov working on these electronic counters for measuring time and counting electrical impulses. With such devices employing fundamental radio principles, time is measured and divided into unbelievably small fractions, down to one millionth of a second.
Every corridor, every doorway leads to some new adventure in the world of radio research. And in every device using radio principles, the nerve center is a tube. So electron tube research is a vital and important part of the work of the laboratory. Tubes developed by research, manufactured by the RCA tube department. Glass is formed into experimental tubes and blown into the desired shape by skilled artisans. There is equipment for heat treating of tubes and machines for cutting glass and a special type of lathe for joining together the various parts of the tube. These men of radio research practice what they preach. They use high frequency heating coils in the tube exhausting process, applying the knowledge they have gained to further their applications of radio theory. No matter what kind of a tube is needed, you'll find it here. Tubes of all descriptions. Tubes that perform a countless number of special operations. Special tubes. Some are water-cooled and developed especially for television broadcasting and capable of carrying ten times the amount of current handled by any tube of similar size and conventional design. These are the tubes that have come from electronic research. This is a shielding cage, an electrical dark room where endless experimental tests are conducted on radio receivers and circuits. For broadcasting and communications are still the main jobs of the radio industry. With this apparatus, tests go on free from interference from stray waves or nearby power lines. The search for new ways to improve radio transmission and reception never stops. Work in shipboard radio is a field of research complete in itself. Radio marine equipment has come a long way since Marconi and the time when spark transmitters were considered standard shipboard apparatus. But the practical knowledge gained from those early radio developments has led to a variety of modern shipboard equipment. Radio telephone and radio telegraph. Direction finders and emergency radios for lifeboats. No ship anywhere on the seven seas need be without direct communication with land or other ships at sea. Radio marine code and voice encircle the globe. But even more exciting is another phase of radio, a field where J.L. Callahan carries on continual research to bring about ever greater efficiency. Radio photo, transmission and reception of pictures through space. Pictures transmitted thousands of miles in a matter of minutes. An idea brought out of the world of fantasy into the world of fact by RCA Communications. Here, Charles J. Young and H. G. Gregg review progress on radio facsimile recording methods. The mysteries of organic chemistry are explored and analyzed and even the housewife's tools are put to work in the service of research. Maurice Arzt has done much to help radio facsimile become a reality. Someday your newspaper may be brought to you by radio, an inconceivable idea, some people said a few years back. But to the men of radio research, no idea is beyond the realm of possibility. Now for a glance across new horizons into an unseen world a world invisible to the most powerful of optical microscopes, but brought into sharp focus by the electron microscope. Electron microscopy, a new art. With the work of Dr. James Hillier and Arthur Vance, research has moved forward the development of this new kind of microscope, which utilizes electrons in place of light. With this instrument, magnifications can be made up to 100,000 diameters as much as 50 times greater than can be obtained with the best light microscopes. This is the windpipe of a mosquito. The influenza virus can now be studied and photographed for the first time by means of the electron microscope. And the action of bacteria-destroying organisms can now be viewed. Already, applications of the electron microscope have reached into the fields of biology. 
textiles, paints and enamels, cements, soil analysis, chemistry, and metallurgy. To match and to supplement the utility of the electron microscope, a microanalyzer has been developed. With it, the basic chemical elements which compose even a small part of a single bacterium or particle of submicroscopic size can be determined. Yes, radio research is many things. One of its phases, experiments with sound, has great importance. Here we join Dr. Harry F. Olson in one of his laboratories. For sound is the voice of radio, its stock and trade. In this acoustics laboratory is a different kind of workroom, a free field sound room, three stories high with a suspended floor, a room completely sound treated to eliminate echoes. Here is created a silence so overpowering that the eardrums tingle. Musical tones or the spoken word are recorded exactly as produced, free from echo and reverberation. And here's Oscar, who is a silent, never complaining assistant who sends out tones to test microphones under close talking conditions. Tests go on constantly to check microphone perfection. This one, an ultra-directional microphone, has new uses in radio broadcasting and motion picture studios. And here is a 15,000 cycle microphone, which registers the complete range of sound audible to the human ear. This is a new development too, primarily for radio broadcasting. This microphone means better registration and improved fidelity of tone. Sound research extends to records for the home, too. The famous RCA Victor seal, guaranteeing faithful recordings of music that everyone loves best. The sound of your narrator's voice on this very film is a product of research. Here on the left is a picture of this soundtrack in action. Much of the research in any organization is of necessity long range reaching far into the future. Tireless, never-ending research. It may not bear fruit for many long years to come. Today, for example, studies are being carried on to determine the effects on the structure of the molecule under the influence of radio fields. The answer, it may come tomorrow or 10 years from tomorrow, but the research never stops. Studies of new materials and methods of using them will have much to do with development of new products in the future and longer life for the products we already have. Radar research has resulted in further explorations to develop new ways of generating extremely short waves of great intensity. The health and welfare of future generations will greatly benefit by studies in the effect of radio power on bacterial content and enzymes. Each section of this building seems devoted to some activity more exciting and stimulating than any other. And this section is no exception, for here truly is the home of television. Here in the World Center of Television Research, Dr. Swarikin and Dr. Albert Rose review a research project, a project of the kind which contributed the iconoscope and the supersensitive RCA image orthicon, the eyes of the modern television camera without which present-day electronic television would be an impossibility. Dr. D.W. Epstein and others conduct research to improve the kinescope, which is the picture tube of the television receiver. This new industry also demands continuing study in other fields of science. For instance, the use of luminescent materials for the coating of television tubes requires a chemistry laboratory for experimentation with phosphors. Here, Humboldt W. Leverins and his associates carry on their work. In specially equipped rooms, studies of crystal structures are made in order to control the color and brightness of phosphors needed for television tubes. Television also demands special studies in optics. In adjoining laboratory bays, tests are made to improve optical equipment. 
specially designed equipment permits close checking of reflecting surfaces. Lenses and mirrors must meet exacting specifications, so this laboratory grinds its own to make sure they'll meet all requirements. And now we join Ray D. Kell in laboratories where he and his co-workers do research on television circuits and television systems. Like every other group, these men of television research work with equipment which represents the last word in facilities. A complete two-story studio is provided for experimental purposes with perfected television cameras, projection equipment and screen for testing and improving the use of television in the home and in theaters. Experimental control rooms incorporate up-to-date features which guarantee that future television audiences will receive pictures and sound of highest quality. Yes, there's every piece of modern television equipment to experiment with, but there's mind power too. The agile minds of scientific men working in a new art, a new art brought to life by research. What lies ahead in the wonder world of television? The full possibilities have yet to be explored, but for some idea of what lies ahead, Let's let television speak for itself. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. WNBT, New York. Sit back, relax, in the best seat in the house, your favorite armchair, and television will bring new worlds of entertainment and education to your living room. Today, broadcasters look ahead with television, experimenting with new program techniques, exploring every possibility for technical improvement, networking to bring the world to your fingertips, all made possible by research. Your favorite television broadcasts originate in great studios, taking wing from the antenna on top of the Empire State Building, 1,250 feet from the ground. The magic of television brings to your home a new and thrilling world of sports. The world of theatrical entertainment, Hollywood, action, stars, and glamour. Television for schoolroom use, for training and educating young America. Television for industry, to help improve manufacturing processes and reduce operating costs. Programs for the housewife, to help her in her all-important job as homemaker for the nation. Television to show history in the making, the news of the day as it happens. But the men of science are looking to tomorrow to new and wider horizons, to improved products and increased industrial efficiency, to new products and greater employment, to better health and a higher standard of living. Yes, to a new world.